welcome. I recycled an old piece of stitching and made this small purse. Look at the colors, look at the textures. I lined it, now it's the perfect little bag to slip a few items into. It's so wonderful to touch. So join me step by step as I take an old piece of stitching and give it a new life. Let's get started. This is the piece that I'm recycling into something new today. It was initially longer and I cut off a piece of that and I turned it into a stitched piece with a raven on it. And I'll link to that video if you wanna see what I did there. And this is the piece that's left over from that. This was one of the first pieces that I made experimenting with slow stitching. And it was a cozy for a planter. And it's been in the bottom of a drawer in my studio for a while. So I used one section of it and I have this section of it and I'm thinking it's about the right size to maybe make into a little bag. So there's a couple of things I wanna to do to it before I make it into a bag. You can see I've folded under and stitched this one end. This is where I cut the other end off, so it's raw. I had made some little notches here that I think I'm going to take out that I don't need. And when I look at this piece, it reminds me of the bag that I made recently. And if you wanna see the full process of creating a rectangular piece of slow stitched fabric that can then be turned into a bag, check out that video. It's a long video and it goes into detail in the process. One of the things I notice when I look at this piece that's not part of my practice now is leaving these edges of the little scraps of fabric raw. I can see here I stitched around it and here but there's a lot of pieces that are raw and I don't do that anymore. I feel like it makes the piece more complete looking and more durable to stitch the edges. I also have another video. Um, it's a quick tip video on how to secure down edges of fabric. So you can also check that video out. So I'm really referring to three different videos that cover getting to this point. So check those out. But in this piece, I'm looking at what I have. This is more of a reclaiming and upcycling and old project and making it into something new. So I'm going to remove these black knots and I'm gonna do a little bit more stitching around the edges in some spots. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna add a lining. When I make it into a bag, I'd like it to be lined. And so I looked in my stash of fabrics and I found this piece of orange, which I thought was a nice match. And it seems to be a nice size to use for this project. So first I'm going to do a little bit of bending and repair. Then I'm going to cut this piece of fabric and I'm going to attach it to the inside. Then make it into a little bag. So I've removed those little black knots and now I'm going to do some stitching on edges that are raw. So in looking at the stitching that I did here all those years ago, I can see that I moved in this direction with black and I moved in this direction with black and I came in with this rusty color, this sort of sienna, and I did some heavy stitching in a few places and did a little bit of experimenting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pick, I think, at least one new color, and I'm going to go around the edges of some of these patches and just add some more stitch.
So I'm using this sort of pinky red color and I've gone around in a couple of places and I'm gonna move that around into other areas and it's really making each patch distinct from the other. Whereas before, I feel like they they were really unified by this black. This is actually pulling them, each one out. So I'm going to see what I think when I've done more stitching. But the idea I have now is that I'm going to complete this using this one color and then maybe come back with this color and do some slow stitching lines to once again add a unity to this piece. So for now, just more of these straight stitches, not worrying about being precise around each separate patch. So now that I've added this sort of pinky red color in some spots, I'm thinking about the stitches I wanted to add to unify it. I'm thinking about the construction of the bag and trying both ways that I could possibly make it with something like this. I have to fold this end under. It could go this way or this way. And when I look at this side, I like it. I notice these blue shades here and here, and I like them. Now, it's not really something that exists uniformly. There's some blue here and a tiny bit here. I'm going to try to add some of this purpley blue color. I'm thinking that that might be a really nice addition. And it's a contrast from the orangey rusty shades. So that'll be my next step. So I've added slow stitching in this sort of cornflower blue color. And I also added some stitching on the edge. This is the way I'm thinking that this will go. So the next thing I'm going to do is stitch this raw edge. You can see the loose threads from where it was cut. So, so the mend and repair and securing of that edge is my next step. So here's a close up of that edge stitched down using that same cornflower blue. I have my orange fabric and I have just ironed the edges in very simply, and I'm gonna put it on. You could use pins or clips. You can put this piece in place and stitch it on. So my lining is stitched on and the front is completely stitched with this blue. So now it's time to turn it into a bag. You can see the sides of this are stitched from when I used it previously. So at this point, there aren't any raw edges. So this is the moment where I decide how big I want this flap to be, exactly the placement that I want everything to be. It's also a fun chance to think about a closure for this. And one of the things I was thinking of is a button closure. So I've grabbed a couple of options here. So it could have this terracotta colored button that ties in with the colors that are on the front and the back. So that's quite nice. I've also found this button, which is a nice pale blue color. So that is continuing the idea of drawing this blue into these orange earthy shades. And I have one other color, which is also nice. This ties in this fabric down here a bit more. It's more blue than this one. I think all three of these are really nice options and you can't really go wrong. So I'm going to take some 
clips and clip it together. I want these sides to line up really nicely. So I have this together and I have my button. What I could have done is made a loop here. I could have used this cording to attach a loop to the inside for closing this button. And then when I stitch the button on, I would make sure it was raised up a little bit so there was room for the cording. And if I had done that, I would have put the cording underneath my lining and stitched my lining closed. And then I would have a loop that was in place and then I would make sure that I put my button exactly in the right spot so that the loop could catch it. But instead of that, I'm going to attach a button. It's just going to be decorative. This is a recycled project. So I'm going to bring in a recycled piece that I have here. This came in something that I purchased and it was wrapped around the item to keep it together. And it's Velcro or hook and loop tape. So the majority of it, it has a buckle on the end, and the majority of it is the soft and fuzzy side. And at the very, very end, there's the rough side. So I'm going to cut off a piece of the rough side, and I'm going to attach it to the top in the middle, and then I'm going to match it with a piece of the soft side here so that it will close and that will be the closure for this. So I'm not going to use my fabric scissors for this. I'm going to use my paper scissors and I'm going to cut two pieces of the same size, about that size. So I'm going to cut a matching piece. So to do that, I'm taking this piece and attaching it Then I will cut. And I like the way that this end piece was rounded. So I'm going to cut around that. So now both pieces are matching. And I can sew them on. I'm going to use regular sewing thread for this. It's not the easiest to sew through by hand. So I'm doubling my thread and I'm going to make sure that I have a pushing thimble to push it through. I'm going to use the side that's scratchy and put it on the top. And I'm going to put the rounded side facing up and then when I so on this bottom part, the soft part, I'm going to do the reverse so that when they match, the rounded sides will both meet. This is five inches long, so two and a half would be the middle. The second piece will be a little easier to find the spot because it will match the first side. I've done a quilter's knot at the end of my thread and I'm gonna start the thread underneath come out and just work my way around. The way I'm doing this, so I'm not always going through so many thicknesses, is I'm sticking my needle kind of underneath and bringing it out. So I've gone all the way around now, and I still have some thread left on my needle. So I am going around again as far as I can. I think every stitch helps is going to be pulled on quite a bit. I just want it to be extra strong. Take some extra stitches at the corner. And I think I have enough to make it to the other corner. So it's going to be on here very securely. It's easy to not pull your thread tight all the way because it is getting caught and I can see there's one loop here. So you can also go back on stitches you've just made and tighten them. 
just by using your needle and pulling on the stitch that you just made like that. So I'm keeping an eye on that as I go around that I'm not leaving any loops. If I turn it to the side and look at it after every couple stitches, I can see if there's any that got caught. But I have just enough thread to take a couple of extra stitches at the corner here. And then I'm gonna knot off. Take a small stitch right at the edge. Put my needle through it twice to knot it. Make sure it pulls tightly. Then I'm gonna bury my needle underneath just this lining. I'm going to bring it out a little ways away. Well, there it is. It's not perfectly straight because it does shift a bit. And now I just need to do the same thing on the other side. So it looks like I want it just a hair off of the lip here, which is perfect. So I'm going to stitch this piece on right here. The loopy side, the softer side, is just slightly easier to stitch into. Very, very similar. And I'm doing the same thing where I'm going underneath and each time I stitch, I'm kind of tugging on it and making sure that it's pulled all the way through and I don't have any loops sticking up. So it really is a slow, fiddly process. The nice thing about using this polyester sewing thread is that it's very strong. So you really can give a nice tug at the end of your stitch and be confident that your thread is gonna stay strong and not break. So there we have it, a Velcro closure. I can choose to put my button here or here, either one. I could even put two buttons if I wanted or even three. But now is the time to make a decision about the buttons before the sides are stitched up. So here are my buttons sewn on. I decided to add three. I stitched in the same direction to tie them together and I used the same color thread black because that's a predominant color in the stitching. So I think that looks really nice. Now it's time to stitch up the sides. So I've sewn this one side I took some extra stitches right at the top to reinforce it. And then the stitches I've taken to sew the rest of it together, you can see them, but they're not very, very visible. So I'm coming in, my knot's gonna get buried in the seam. And for this part, I'm going through a lot of layers. I'm going slowly and I'm using my thimble. And my goal here is to go back and forth through all the layers multiple times to really reinforce this top corner where it may be getting some stress. I'm pulling it tight. I could use black or a different color. I chose this cornflower blue because I had used it throughout the piece and along the top edge here. So this is where it's going to get the stress. So I'm going to stitch inside here with a few stitches. So I'm going to go in and come out here in my lining. And then go in here through this lining and push all the way through. That's very, very thick. So I'm going to use my thimble to push it. It's quite difficult. And then I've got my needle puller here to 
to help me pull that through. And then one more time. So that feels like it's sturdy. And now the stitches that I take are going to be smaller and more hidden. So the stitch I'm using here is kind of a cross between a ladder stitch and a mattress stitch. I'm going back and forth. My goal is to connect the two sides. It's very thick. So a lot of times I'm taking one stitch through half of it, coming out the middle, and then going into the other half. And that's really because it's easier on my hands. And working this way, it ends up that just a very small stitch shows on the outside which is fine. My goal isn't to have these stitches be visible or invisible. I'm really just doing what works to connect both sides. And I'm gonna work this way all the way to the bottom. So I've made my way all the way to the bottom. So now both sides are stitched. If you look at this side, it has black stitching that's closer together than on this side. And the purple stitches are not very visible. And in terms of looking at the side, I like the way that it looks. And for this side, I was looking at it and you can see a little bit of the orange, certainly more than you can on this side, which is fine. But it had me thinking about, I still have some thread left and I thought to tie in with the stitching I'd done in this same color and to tie in with the top where I'd done some stitching, I'm going to come back in this direction on this piece of off-white fabric and I'm gonna do some blanket stitches. I think that's going to make a small difference and in terms of decoration. It's not functional. At this point, it's just for decoration. Now, this is very thick. I'm going to work my way to here. So these extra stitches are going to be on half of one side, which I like the idea of because I'm not going for a uniform look with a patchwork like this and the freeform stitching seems to be a really nice way to add and you can see that if you look directly at the side that orange with this purpley shade of blue is really popping so the idea is that looking at this piece from all different angles, there'll be something, there'll be something interesting to, to look at and see. So I stitched here and I stopped here and I still had some thread. So I decided to come up and stitch along this part to add that color. So when you close it, it's almost like this color meets. So both sides are now stitched closed. This is so nice to hold. I'm so pleased with the way this has turned out. The Velcro makes for a really secure closure. The lining gives it an extra bit of a luxurious feel. It's the perfect size to put a few things into. It's a beautiful little bag made from recycled materials. It feels really good to use old materials and make them into something new and give them a second life. I don't think anyone would know this is made from an old piece. And now I get to enjoy it a second time. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, 
Happy stitching.